already know before i even get started many of my subscribers have sent me this particular story as a matter of fact my in the last day my emails my dms on twitter have been jumping from various stories that y'all wanted me to talk about and i'm going to try to cover as many of them as possible whichever ones i don't cover will be in the uh, soundcloud and or a live stream format in some videos i'll put in a video format like this one so Rachel Dolezal is back in the news. The last time we heard about her was when she announced that she was doing that Netflix, uh, I guess, mini series, and it was one where her son was basically calling her out, saying what she was doing was ridiculous and that she was going too far with it and whatnot. Now Rachel is back in the news because she has been charged with welfare fraud. That white woman within her, that is her, I should say is literally coming to the surface and is to be honest it was always there it's just that she was trying to hide it under a mask now i have done stories in the past about welfare fraud and in every last one of those stories i did it involved a white person or white people in general specifically white jewish people and when i tell you that they are so wrapped up in this in the welfare fraud they steal millions of dollars in it, but because of their status, they hardly ever see any jail time. So I'm curious to see what's going to come of Rachel in this particular setting. I'm going to go ahead and read this article from the Washington Post. Former NAACP official Rachel Dolezal, a white woman who posed as African-American for years, is now facing charges of welfare fraud after investigators say she illegally received thousands of dollars in public assistance. Dolazar, who legally changed her name to Nikichi Diallo in 2016, is accused of stealing $8,847 in food and child care assistance dating back to August 2015, according to court documents obtained by KHQ TV. She is charged as Nikichi Diallo, also known as Rachel A. Dolezal, with first-degree theft by welfare fraud, second-degree perjury, and false verification for public assistance. You know, finding out that she was on public assistance is not a surprise because when she lost that job, when she got exposed from the NAACP and she got fired, she has gone on and said that she hasn't been able to get a job and everything like that. And she's just been doing hair, like braiding women's hair out of her house what or whatnot, just to make a little bit of money. So to find out that she was on welfare does not surprise me. And also her stealing this money illegally doesn't surprise me either. Local reporters who went to her Spokane home seeking comments said she declined to say anything and closed the door. The investigation into Dole's all began in March of last year when an investigator from the Washington Department of Social and Health Services learned she had written a book that had been published. The investigator did further research into the book's publisher and discovered a typical contract would include payments of $10,000 to $20,000 as advances against her later royalties. At this time, Dolezal has been reporting a monthly income of less than $500, which came from child support payments. She resigned from the NAACP in June 2015 when her parents revealed that she was actually white and claimed that since then she had been unemployed and unable to find work. When asked how she was paying her living expenses, she, would quote, she was quoted in the document saying barely with help from friends and gifts. But a review of Dolezal's self-employment records, which include bank statements revealed a less dire situation. In total, between August 2015 and September 2017, Dolezal's bank statements show she had deposited nearly $84,000. Investigators believe the money came from her book, speaking engagements and selling art, soaps, and handmade dolls. In 2017, Dolezal reported a change of circumstance citing a one-time job for speaking and voiceovers she did in October that earned her $20,000. Documents show Dolezal was made aware that she would be criminally prosecuted if she willfully made a false statement or failed to report things. Dolezal was called in for an interview with an investigator in April, during which she was informed that the investigation was about her discrepancies in reporting. Dolezal responded that she had fully disclosed her information and asked what discrepancies the investigator said. Then Dolezal reportedly told the investigator that she did not have to answer, cutting the interview short. Refusing to answer questions, she has proved to not be good defense for Dolezal. Dolezal's story of posing as an African-American captured headlines across the globe in 2015. 
She was outed as pretending to be African American after her carefully constructed image was shattered during an interview in 2015 when she was asked a single question, are you an African American? Dolezal did not answer and instead walked off camera. Dolezal is the subject of a Netflix documentary called The Rachel Divide, which was released in April according to a statement from Netflix. She was not paid for the project. If found guilty, Dolezal could face up to 15 years in prison and could be ordered to pay $8,887 as restitution. She may also be disqualified from receiving food assistance for at least a year. Dolezal is expected to appear in court on June 6th. Well... I can honestly say that I feel nothing because ever since this woman got exposed, it's like we had to keep seeing her everywhere. She is like literally one of the most annoying people in the world, like ever in life. One of many. But this is what she gets. This is her karma right here. And you know what's so crazy? It was her own parents that exposed her. The people that gave her life that exposed her, not an enemy of hers. Not a scorned lover or an ex-best friend or a family member that's probably, I mean, well, as far, well, a family member did, but you know what I mean, as far as like a child or something like that. It was the people that brought her into this world that exposed her. That's how that, that's how that interview was able to ask her that question. Because apparently she was unaware that her parents had been speaking to reporters and when that reporter had got a hold of her and asked her that single question, that was it. That was the nail in the coffin. And that's how the world got exposed to Richard Dolezal, and that's how her lie got exposed to the world. But the fact, like I said, that, she's, that she committed welfare fraud does not surprise me in the least bit. But it's what she gets, and it's what she deserves. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next one.